Hello and welcome to the guide. If you're looking for a build that has excellent movement speed and map playability that can't be hindered or slowed, along with top tier defenses and tankiness that absolutely shreds through maps and end game bosses like the Hulk himself, then my Ground Slam Juggernaut is the build you have been looking for. In this guide, we will go over the mechanics of the build, gear, gems and links, ascendancy choices, pantheon choices, the passive tree, jewels and cluster jewels, followed up by gameplay at the end of the video. Path of building and timestamps will be down below. Let's get right into it. As the name implies, we're a juggernaut. Our main damage output is going to be ground slam. We actually have the Val version of it. The Val ground slams themselves do screen wide damage, major, major chunks of damage. Also, in this build, we'll be stacking endurance charges. I have a total of eight of them, which will be up at all times. As well as we have close to 100% crit chance, we will be stacking critical strike multiplier. We have a 100% chance to impale enemies on hit. And also we will be running dual curses. As for the gear of the build, we'll go ahead and start off right here on our weapon. Now for the, the weapon, the base that we want to go with is the eventuality rod. The reason that we're going to go with this base is, as you can see the implicit right there, plus one to maximum power charges and maximum endurance charges. This is great because we are stacking endurance charges and also will give us another power charge which will put us at four. We will also be able to generate power charges because of our chest and a note on the tree. Now, you want to try to get one that has at least 500 base DPS. Um, this one right here is actually a pretty nice weapon, pretty expensive. You don't need one exactly like this though. Like I said, try to go for around 500 base DPS, get attack speed on it if you can, accuracy, crit chance, crit multiplier. Those are good things to look for. Now, before I actually had this one, I was using this that I crafted myself. I bought the base for like 1 or 2x, something like that. Um, I quality it up to 30%, and then I just hit it with jagged fossils until I got you know a decent amount of damage. Which, this will work out just fine for you. Just know that if you can get something like this, though, it's definitely going to be more damage. Now, onto the helmet. Right here, we're going to run the Abyssus. Now, the reason that we're going to run the Abyssus is because it gives us a huge amount of damage. Now, there is one downfall. You can see right down there at the bottom, 40% increased physical damage taken. But, since we are stacking Endurance Charges on the build... That is not going to be a problem. You won't even notice it. You know, other builds, that would be a death sentence. But for this build, not a problem at all. Our our, our defenses when it comes to, you know, physical damage are just insane. So with this build, in my opinion, the best helm for the build will be the Abyssus. I got the, the Implicit right there. 40% increased ground slam damage. If you can get that, that'd be great. I think there's another one that gives uh, angle or area of effect. If you can try to find one like that also, that would be good. Onto, onto the amulet. Now, when it comes to the amulet, we are going to be starved for dexterity a little bit, and we will definitely be starved for intelligence, so I would go with a turquoise base. We will be allocating Disciple of the Unyielding, which gives us plus one to maximum endurance charges, you know, 8% chance to gain endurance charge on kill, and 8% increased damage per endurance charge. I'll show you where that's at in the tree section of the build guide. Other stats that you want to look for on your amulet is flat physical damage and increased critical strike multiplier. As you can see right here with my amulet, I have both tier 1 on both of those, so this is a really good amulet. You also want to get as much maximum life as you can and as much resistances as you possibly can. Now for the rings. On my first ring right here, you I wanted to go for resistances. I wanted to get as much intelligence as I needed for the build. And then also, you want to get as much life... And also you want to get a curse on this one. On your first ring, you need to get the uh, curse enemies with vulnerability on hit with 32% increased effect. Now you can get the 20% increased effect version. I think it's like tier 2. This is uh, tier 1, if I'm not mistaken. You definitely want to get that though because we are going to be dual cursing uh, because of our chess. We can apply additional curse. Now, say that you don't get the chest because you can't afford it with the additional curse at first then uh, you're going to want to go with the uh, vulner vulnerability curse that you have right here on this first ring. For our second ring, our second curse, we're going to want 
trigger level 12 assassin's mark when you hit a rare unique enemy this is going to give us a huge amount of damage against uh heavier targets or bosses pretty much the need be when it comes to in-game stuff for the build you're going to go the two, two curse route though you want to go with this curse on your second ring um on one of your two rings you definitely want to get the non-channeling skills have minus eight to total mana cost we have a little bit of mana issues with the build not not too bad though not as bad as other builds so definitely on the second ring though, you want to get uh, level 12 Assassin's Mark and then go for whatever other stats you can get. You know, definitely you want to have life on your ring, you know, strength if you can get it. You know, I got crit chance right there, which is always nice. Um, I tried to get chaos resistance wherever I could. And as you can see right here, I'm actually at 25% chaos res resistance in the positive, which is definitely a good thing. We don't want to be in the negative or try not to be anyways. Now for the chest, when it comes to the chest, my opinion you want to go with the astral plate now one thing that we definitely want on our chest is we want the attacks have well i have 1.97 percent to critical strike chance you want to get the attack crit on your chest that base crit is going to give a lot of crit to our build overall so you know this right here is the elevated version gives us more up to two percent base crit just a normal t1 version version would be up to 1.5 percent base crit so of all things on your chest, you definitely want to try to go with the base crit. Now, I also got 15% chance to gain a power charge on critical strike, which is nice because we can have four power charges up at all times. Um, I'm also able to get power charges because of a note on the tree, which I'll show you when we get to the tree section. So if you can get that on there, but the, the second most important thing on the chest is you want to try to get, you can apply additional curse. Having that makes it to where we're able to run both of our curses on our rings which curse on hit awesome for the build huge chunk of damage aside from that you know i got lucky this is a nice chest i got 35 percent to the chaos resistance you don't have to have that just try to get whatever else life and resistance is that you can on the chest down to the gloves okay when it comes to the gloves in my opinion the number one thing that you want to get on the gloves and bear in mind we do want to go with the um spiked gloves because they give the implicit 20% increased melee damage. Now the main thing that we want here on the gloves is we want to get Culling Strike. And what Culling Strike does means that enemies are on that are on 10% or lower life after you're hit or killed. So any enemy that is at 10% or lower life is instantly dead. Any boss, Cyrus, Maven, doesn't matter. So we definitely want to have Culling Strike. That basically in turn is a 10% more multiplier to our damage. Other things that you want to look for. Increased attack speed like I have up there at the top is awesome. We definitely want to get that. Try to get the best life roll that you can. Um, you know, I have the fizz damage. Leech this life, which is nice. We're going to get leech from the tree, so you don't have to have that. But that would be decent if you can get that on there. Try to get whatever other good things that you can on your gloves. Now, for the belt. This was my easiest way to get resistances. I, went, I tried to just get as much life and resistances as possible. I was able to fit in. You know some extra armor down there don't worry about the energy shield that doesn't matter but for me on the belt just try to go for life and resistances now we definitely want to go with the stitch and vise base so that we're able to have a searching eye jewel inside of here uh on the searching eye jewel try to get as much life again as possible try to get critical strike multiplier attack speed critical strike chance basically whatever you can afford but the best damage would be either the attack speed or the uh Critical Strike Multiplier for your Jewel. Now onto the boots. Okay, so because of our ascendancy in this build, we're not gonna be able to be frozen or chilled or anything. Our, our movement speed or our actual action speed of the character cannot be changed whatsoever because of our ascendancy. So don't worry about the cannot be chilled and don't worry about getting boots that cannot be frozen. In my opinion, on the boots, now I have pretty nice boots right here. You can see I have plus one to maximum endurance charges on the boots. Along with Tailwind, you know, anywhere you can get endurance charges is great. It's going to be more damage, more damage mitigation for the build overall. So if you can get the plus one to endurance charges on your boots, definitely get it. But the main thing that you want to get here is, you know, your 30% increased movement speed. And you want to try to get Tailwind if you've dealt a critical strike recently. Now, if you can get elusive boots, if you got the money to do that, then that's fine. In my opinion, though, I would rather have the endurance charge over the elusive with this build by a long shot. But mainly with the boots, though, like I said, you want to go with life. You want to get your movement speed, top tier movement speed, 30%. And you want to try to get the tailwind because that's going to give us more movement speed and action speed for the build. 
Now down here into the flasks. When it comes to the flask, I'm running a one quick silver flask. I'm also running a <clears throat> onslaught flask. We definitely want to have onslaught with the build. And I get my shock immunity right here. We're going to run a diamond flask. Now on your diamond flask, you know, you get 100% increased global critical strike chance from the actual flask. And then you want to try to get to where you're able to craft uh, 40 to 60% increased critical strike chance during flask effect down below along with the maximum charges so that this flask is up at all times huge chunk of damage for the build you want to try to get a flask just like this if you don't have that craft on your bench then go ahead and purchase one off of the market but I would definitely say you go with this flask right here we're definitely going to go with the lion's roar granite flask gives us a ton of armor 10% more physical damage during flask effect gives knockback you know we definitely want to have this flask and then obviously we want to have at least one life flask that's really all you're going to need for the build because we will be running enduring cry which jumps our life up super quick it's kind of like if you're in a, a jam you just hit your enduring cry if you don't have last charges left for your life flask it'll bump your life right back up uh on your seething divine flask though you definitely want to get uh bleed immunity and corrupted blood immunity now we will be running a corrupted blood jewel in our tree, but that's not going to help with the bleed immunity. We definitely want to have the bleed immunity right here on our flask. Now, as you can see down here, I have the Audrey's elixir. Now, while <clears throat> mapping and going into like map bosses and stuff like that, your endurance charges will be up instantly, pretty much 24/7. Now, say that you're going to fight like Maven, or you're going to fight um, Cyrus, or a boss where you're not killing any monsters before you get to the boss. What you're going to do is you're going to switch this out for this with the Audrey's Elixir. You know, it gain, gain three endurance charges on use, three frenzy, three power. Now, basically what we're worried about right here is the endurance charges. Whatever else we get is fine. Now, when you do pop this flask, as you can see right up there, you take 50% of your maximum life as chaos damage on use. So I pop the flask. Look, I take a bunch of damage, right? Not a big deal. Just hit your enduring cry once after you pop the flask. Right there, you're inside of the boss fight. You have eight endurance charges up automatically, okay? So that's how to just get your endurance charges right off the bat when you go into a boss fight. And then you can go ahead and put this back if you want, however you want to do it. But that's the easiest way to pop your endurance charges up. If you don't have that, you can throw on these boots real quick. Switch out your boots for these ones right here. As you can see down here, gain a frenzy endurance or power charge once per second while you're stationary. So that can get your endurance charges kicked off also. This... This flask right here, though, just to mention, counts on hit. Now, we gain one endurance charge every second because of our ascendancy once we're hit. So, if I pop this flask, as you can see right there, that counts as us taking... Obviously, we take damage. It counts as a, as a hit. We jump up to eight endurance charges super quick. So, you just put that in, pop that, switch it out. Hit your enduring cry. You're good to go. You're not using your life flask charges or anything. For the gems on the build, we'll go ahead and start off right here inside of the weapon. We're going to want to go ahead and obviously start off with Ground Slam. Try to get yourself at least a 20-20 Ground Slam. If you're able to find a 20, or I'm sorry, if you're able to find a 21-20 Ground Slam, go ahead and pick that up. A little bit more damage. Over here, we'll have increased critical damage support. Now, the reason that we run this is because it's actually one blue that we can put into the weapon. Um, we're able to switch out with Concentrated Effect. This right here is what we're going to use for bosses. We'll go ahead and switch these two out for bosses. Concentrated effect gives us a huge amount of damage for bossing. So use that for the more difficult bosses. I'm not saying like map bosses, you don't necessarily need it for those. Just like, you know, Cyrus, Maven, like the heavier bosses. Okay. So now down to here, we're going to go with uh, melee physical damage. If you're able to get the awakened version, will definitely be more damage. Definitely want to have Impale. Uh, I have a 2120. Better get at least a 2020. Uh, brutality support. Now, if you can get awakened on this also, by all means do it because it's going to be more damage. And then over to here, uh, Ruthless support. Definitely want to get Ruthless. It's the best damage wise for the build. Get a 2020 or a 2120 if you're able to. Now, back up here with the increased critical damage. Just want to say with this real quick if you're able to get a weapon that has one white socket, then switch this out with Endurance Charge on Melee Stun support. It will actually be more damage than increased critical damage support, just by a little bit. But the reason that I don't run the other support is because with this, I'm able to have a blue socket so I can switch these two out. Now into our helm. Now we have Ancestral War Chief connected to multiple totems. Basically, as you can see down there, we want to pop this up with bosses. Um, 
18% more melee damage while totem is active, as you can see down there. Nice chunk of damage to us for bossing. Multiple totem support makes it to where you spawn up too when you uh, make them at the bosses. Now down here we have leap slam with faster attacks. That's basically our mobility skill. It makes it to where we're able to leap slam all, all around the map quickly. Now into our chest. Okay, so we have pride. Try to get uh, 2020 or 2120. Flesh and stone, get at least a 20 on that. Precision, keep that at level 1. Enlighten, uh, get a 3. If you can get a 4, you'll have more mana because of it. Uh, blood and sand, level 7. And maim support. Now, blood and sand and flesh and stone go together. Um, when you're in sand stance, it gives more area of effect with a little bit less damage. When you're in blood stance, it gives more area of damage with a little bit less area of effect. Uh, basically, I always run around in blood stance for the more damage because we have quite a bit of area of effect as, as it is. Now, flesh and stone, we're gonna keep. <coughs> we're gonna keep in blood stance. Also, nearby enemies are maimed, and as you can see down there, enemies maimed by this skill take 16% increased physical damage. Now, if you actually add maimed support in with the links connected to flesh and stone, as you can see. Down here, where's it at? Right here. Uh, nearby enemies down there at the bottom. Nearby enemies are maimed while in blood stance and at the top. Enemies maimed by this skill take 26% increased physical damage. Because when you add maim to the to the flesh and stone, it makes it to where the nearby enemies take even more increased damage when they're maimed by the skill. So you definitely want to have this gem set up right here. Now, say that you get an enlightened three and you're having uh, issues with mana, go ahead and drop the maim because, you know, that's going to multiply your mana up more. But definitely try to fit that in if you can. Try to go with the same setup here in the chest that I have. Inside of the gloves, we got anomalous molten shell, empower support, increased duration, and dread banner. Now, the empower is just going to bring our molten shell and our dread banner up. Um, we definitely want to have dread banner because this our... Uh, 20% more chance to impale and impale effect. Uh, anomalous Molten Shell. Now I have that set down here on my left click. And it's also going to have increased duration because of the gem right here. But I have it on left click so we're, it's just automatically up at all times. It's going to absorb a ton of damage for us. And you want to try to go with the anomalous version of it if possible. Because as you can see down there, buff can take an additional... I'm sorry, buff can take additional damage equal to 5% of your armor. So that, along with the 20% that you get from Molten Shell, is going to make it 25%. So buff can take damage equal to 25% of your armor, which is nice. Molten Shell takes a lot of damage for us. It's very nice defensively. Over here into our boots now, we got Enduring Cry. Basically, we talked about that earlier. Hit it once. We're going to just use that as an auto life flask for over here. Okay. Now we have Cast Wind Damage taken, Phase Run, and Blood Rage. Okay. So, uh, I have Blood Rage on Cast and Damage taken, so it's always up. I mean, it's going to be up 24-7, bossing, mapping, whatever you're doing, okay? Uh, what Blood Rage does, it's going to give us some base attack speed. It gives us uh, physical damage leech. Now, it's going to make it to where you take 4% of your maximum life per second as physical damage. We're stacking so many endurance charges, and we have so much defense on the build, you're not even going to notice it. So, definitely just have that on your Cast and Damage setup. I'm sorry, on your cast one damage taken setup. Uh, now you may ask, why are we running phase run? We're the only reason that I'm actually running uh, phase run on the build is because, as you can see right here, 21% more melee physical damage in the secondary uh, duration. So this has two effects. We're not really so much worried about the first effect, but with the second effect, so basically once phase once we get hit and phase run comes up, okay, we're gonna be going right here and. Once we, that first initial hit that we do is going to have 20% more damage, whether it's our regular slam or our Val ground slam. That 20% multiplier to our damage is a huge damage increase. So we definitely want to have that. For our ascendancy, we are the Juggernaut. Uh, the first two points that I went into while mapping were right here, up to Unstoppable. As you can see right here, uh, armor and movement speed. Now Unstoppable. In my opinion is great for the build i love this node right here 10 percent increased movement speed so along with this that'd be 14 percent going up here now with this with unstoppable obviously right there cannot be stunned 
great for the build. The best things about it though, in my opinion, are the second two lines down below. Action speed cannot be modified to below base value and movement speed cannot be modified to below base value. With those, basically nothing in the game can slow you down. No hinder, nothing. No degen, nothing can slow you down. No tendrils, I mean, this build is constantly on the go and will not be slowed down during deliriums, uh, anything. So this right here, in my opinion, huge defensively. Unstoppable is great, okay? Next, I came over to here into unflinching. This gives us 30% chance to gain an endurance charge when you are hit. 25% chance that if you would gain an endurance charge, you instead gain up to your maximum endurance charges. And then down there, gain one endurance charge every second if you've been hit recently. And plus one to our maximum endurance charges, which is great. Unflinching is awesome. Okay. Now we're going to come up this way to unyielding. Unyielding gives us 8% increased damage per endurance charge. 6% increase of area of effect per endurance charge. You know, I have eight endurance charges, quite a bit of AOE right there, quite a bit of damage. And then 25% chance to gain an endurance charge when you are when you stun an enemy, and 10% increased stun duration on enemies per endurance charge. With this build, we're stunning all enemies so much, and we even stun bosses, it's awesome. Now next, we're gonna come up here, okay? Into Undeniable. This gives you 500%, or I'm sorry, 500 to flat accuracy rating. 1% increase attack speed per 150 accuracy rating and you gain accuracy rating equal to twice your strength So basically by taking these this node right here We don't have to worry about our accuracy maybe just a little bit to cap it off and it gives us a bunch of attack speed so awesome node to take For the Pantheon choices now, I'm just gonna start off by saying this is kind of open to you you can kind of fill in whatever you feel that you need to or is beneficial for you on here now as far as i went uh, i went with soul of our uh five percent reduced damage taken from damage over time 50 percent increased recovery rate of life and energy shields if you stop taking damage over time recently nice boost boost for our, uh regen 30 percent reduced effect of shock on you and 30 percent reduced shock duration now shock getting shocked in maps you know makes it to where you take a lot more damage and being a melee build that can be pretty detrimental to life and death so you know, that's a great one right there. 25% to chaos resistance against damage over time. Solovar Carly, in my opinion, uh, great defensively, you know, for the Major God. Maybe over here you could go with Solo Lunaris. Uh, I did go with that at very first. You know, it gives you 1% increased physical damage reduction for each nearby enemy and 1% increased movement speed for each nearby enemy. So if you want to, you can go with that. Kind of, you know, maybe help your clearing speed a little bit. Uh, down here for the Minor God, I went for Soul of Grethkul, 1% increased physical damage reduction for each hit you've taken recently up to 5%, you know, 5% more uh, physical damage reduction, not bad to have, but like I said, with the uh, Pantheon, it's kind of open, you can look around, see whatever you think benefits you better. Let's get into the Passive Tree. Now, this is uh, level 92, that's the level of the character at the time of the video. Um, as far as leveling goes... Basically, you want to go with, uh, you know, staff damage nodes, critical strike damage nodes, you know, life nodes. I'll leave it kind of open to you how you want to do that. I did run ground slam from level one, super strong from there, you know, add whatever supports you want for melee fizz or area, whatever. Um, when it comes to the bandits, go ahead and kill all of the bandits so you get the two passive points. That'll be good for our build. Uh, as far as our anointment. On our amulet we're going to come down here we're going to get disciple of the unyielding uh gives us plus one to minimum endurance charges eight percent chance to gain an endurance charge on kill and eight percent increased damage per endurance charge you know i'm running eight endurance charges so that's 64 percent increased damage so we definitely want to get unyielding for our anointment uh it's going to be one purple red and opalescent <clears throat> now on the tree basically where i go is i start off here come up here uh, to Heart of the Warrior for this life up here, Born to Fight, come over here to Butchery for some damage. Early on, you know, however, whichever way you go, you want to come over here and grab this socket right here because we want to get a uh, Rapid Expansion Jewel in there early on, which will give us more angle on our Ground Slam. We'll go into the Jewels a little bit later. Come up here, you can go to Constitution for some life, right here to this for some Impale and Impale Effect. Come over this way for Art of the Gladiator for movement speed attacks, or I'm sorry, attack speed, accuracy, dexterity, 
you know, life in here in the bravery, master of the arena. Um, we are going to come down here at some point and get champion of the cause for the reduced reservation of the skills. Uh, you don't really need to necessarily do that early on. You can do that at the later stages. <clears throat> now we'll come down here. You know, obviously we've got a cluster here. We'll talk about that in the cluster jewel section in just a minute. We are going to want to grab this life up here up to bloodless. Grab this life right here to juggernaut. Come right here. We'll grab this jewel socket. We'll come right here and grab this endurance charge up here for this life and barbarism right here for some uh, crit chance crit multi really strong nodes right here obviously we're gonna get another cluster jewel right here we're gonna now we definitely want to come over to this wheel at some point and get this this gives us life and also reduce cost of our skills and that along with the minus mana cost on our ring makes it to where we can comfortably uh, map with no problems or mana issues now you're gonna want to come over here we're gonna want to get all of these nodes over here real good ones for staffs Whirling Barrier, Counterweight, over to Smashing Strikes, you know, a bunch of crit chance, block, damage. Um, which one was it? Let's see. Counter, or I'm sorry. Right here, Whirling Barrier. Now, we do have the chance on our chest to get uh, power charges on crit. And then right here, we also have 20% chance to gain a power charge when you block. So that's another way that we can generate our power charges. You know, just know that during mapping and even most bossing, we're going to have all power charges up. All frenzy and all endurance charges. <clears throat> We're gonna want to come over here. We'll grab this other endurance charge. Come over here to devotion. Grab this one life note over here also because it's six percent. Then we're gonna want to come up here for a little bit of intelligence and also another jewel socket because we're gonna be running two rapid expansions on the build. Now for the jewels, uh, we will be running two rapid expansions in our jewels. On one of them, if you can, try to get corrupted blood. We want to definitely get Corrupted Blood somewhere on one of our jewels, but if you can get it on the Rapid Expansion, try to get it there. Not too expensive. Now, the reason that we're going to run two of these is basically it gives a lot more angle to our Ground Slam, <coughs> where we're covering a lot more area. So, definitely want to go with uh, two Rapid Expansions. On my other one up here, I have uh, you know 9% increased Global Critical Strike Chance. You can get that or whatever damage mods or whatever, that'd be great. If you can't get any of that, though, you just get regular ones. They're super cheap. Now, uh, we are going to be running a Watcher's Eye, okay? On the Watcher's Eye, the one thing that you definitely want to get uh, is your hits intimidate enemies for four seconds while, you, while you are using Pride. Now, enemies intimidated take 10% increased attack damage. So, that's basically a 10% more multiplier for our damage. So, we definitely want to get that one mod on our Watcher's Eye. Now, I have a, a pretty halfway decent uh, Watcher's Eye. I also got, you know, 56% increased attack physical damage while using pride so pretty nice now other things that you can get you can get uh you know attack speed from precision you can get uh crit chance from pre precision you can get like 12 percent chance to deal double damage from pride you know there's other stuff you can get but i would say at least definitely get uh the intimidate for four seconds while using pride now on to our jewels now we have two sets of clusters okay so meaning we're gonna have four jewels in our four mediums now, when it comes to your jewels and your medium clusters, you know, the first thing that you're going to want to look for is 18% to critical strike multiplier with two-handed melee weapons. That's going to be our biggest crit multi that we can get. Now, we can also get global, global crit multi or uh, crit multi with melee skills. Um, you want to try to go with, you know, 5% or around 5% attack speed on the jewels if you can't get crit multi. Basically, get whatever crit multi you can for the build life and attack speed. Just know the crit multi is pretty huge for the build. Or like right here, you know, I have the 10% increased damage, crit multi, uh, melee crit multi, life. Try to definitely get that 7% life on each one, though. We want to pick up as much life on these jewels as we can. You know, down here I have crit multi, crit multi, life. Uh, right here, more crit multi, crit multi, and life. So basically, when it comes to your jewels, you know, like I said, try to get as much damage, crit multi, life, you know, and attack speed that you can get. Now we'll get into the cluster jewels, the meat and potatoes of the passive tree. So for your first large cluster, you're going to want to go for an 8 passive. And you're going to want to get Fuel the Fight, Overlord, and Smite the Weak. Now, you definitely want to get Fuel the Fight and Overlord. Um, Fuel the Fight is going to give us attack speed. It's going to give us mana leech and damage while leeching. And we definitely want to have a source of mana leech. Now, 
Overlord right here is going to give us 30% increased damage with staves, basically. Nice little damage. But the main thing right here with Overlord is we're going to gain Fortify for 6 seconds on melee hit with a Mace, Scepter, or Staff. So basically, anytime we hit anything with our Staff, we're going to have Fortify for 6 seconds. So Fortify is always up. And it's nice to get it right here on this node. So that makes it to where we don't have to you know, put in Fortify support or anything like that. We get it right here on our large Cluster, cluster Jewel. Uh, and by going with 8 passive, Fuel the Fight, and Overlord with Smite the Weak, it's going to put Smite the Weak out here on the backside so that we don't have to actually allocate that. We just allocate up this way and up this way, only using 5 different nodes. Okay. Now for our 2 medium clusters on this large cluster right here, we're going to want to go with 2 of the same ones. We're going to go with the 4 passive or 5 passive 3% increase effect of non-cursed auras from your skills. And we're going to want to get first among equals and commander, or I'm sorry, master of command. Now, the important one here is master of command. What master of command does is 50% reduce reservation of banner skills and 15% increase effect of non cursed auras from your skills on enemies. So it's going to increase our pride, it'll increase our dread banner, increases all of our, all of our auras by 15%. Now, we're running two of these because, as you can see, 50% reduce reservation of banner skills. That's going to make it to where with two of these, that's 100% reduced reservation. So basically, we're running our banner for free, which makes it great. And we're able to do everything as far as our mana goes. Okay, so we definitely want to run two medium clusters. They can either be four or five passives. And we want to have Master of Command on the, the actual clusters. Okay, and also get, you know, first among equals if you can. Up here to our second cluster. Now for our second large cluster, we're going to go with... Feed the Fury, Martial Prowess, and Weighted, or I'm sorry, Weight Advantage. Now, right here we have Feed the Fury. It's going to give us, uh, you know, Attack Leech, 30% increased damage while leeching, and 15% increased attack speed while leeching, which we're always going to be leeching, either life or in, uh, mana. So, you know, 30% uh, increased damage plus 15% increased attack speed. This one node, and it gives us life leech. This, this node's huge for the build, so we definitely want to have that. Now, uh, weight advantage, right here, you know, with our staff, basically, we're going to be dealing 30% increased damage with hits and ailments, 4% chance to deal double damage, and 20 to strength. You know, it gives us a little bit of life, tons of damage, uh, you know, it's great to have. And then also, a martial prowess will be back here on the back, so, you know, like I said, right now, I'm level 92. Technically, I could have this in with these going at 90, and then... I went into this way up to 92 because this was some nice damage. Actually, martial prowess gives you some nice benefits. You know, 20% increased attack damage, accuracy, attack speed. Great to have. Okay, so into our medium clusters over here, they're kind of kind of important. On our first one, we want to go with either four or five passive. Now we're gonna go right here with 3% increase effect of your curses, and the reason that we're gonna go with that is because we're going to get exploit weakness which give which gives us 25 percent increased vulnerability curse effect and 15 percent increased damage so this is a huge damage node actually and then evil eye uh the main one right here is evil eye because enemies you curse take five percent increased damage which is nice damage wise but also non-cursed enemies you inflict non-aura curses on are blinded for four seconds so basically we're because of our rings and our two curses we're cursing on hit constantly and Anything, any any curse that we inflict gives us blind, which makes it to where with blind, basically the enemy's chance to hit you is cut in half. It's cut by 50%. It's basically almost giving us like 50% dodge or 50% evasion. Huge defensively for the build. So for our second cluster, we definitely want to have our second medium, or I'm sorry, first medium cluster, we definitely want to have four or five passive, exploit weakness, and evil eye. Okay, now on our second medium cluster we want to go with either four or five passive again now over here i went with titanic swings and towering threat titanic or i'm sorry towering threat gives us eight percent increased maximum life life nice little life boost ten percent increased area of effect because we definitely want to boost our area of effect a little bit so i used one of our clusters to do that one of our medium clusters uh right here in titanic swings you know we get 20 percent increased area damage you know, uh, while wielding a two-handed melee weapon, but also we get 15% increased area of effect while wielding a two-handed melee weapon. So, you know, we're getting 25% AOE right here from these alone, okay? So they're awesome to have for the build. And like I said, just remember for from like 90 up to 92, 
I would go this way up into Martial Prowess. It's a nice damage boost. Really nice to have. If you found this guide helpful, consider checking out my channel for more content and guides. I have a bunch of stuff over there on my channel. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys, guys with some uh, gameplay footage. Thanks for watching. Time has no meaning. Your pain will be 